what I have always been told, but I didn't really think it through, is there is not one word changed, there is not one letter changed. Correct. The same letters in the Quran that we have today, here it is right here, this is the Quran we have today, is exactly the same as that which was revealed to Muhammad between 610 and 632, exactly the same letters, the same words, in some cases they would say even the same dots and the same vowels as that which was finally canonized and written down in its final form at the time of 652, the time of Uthman, exactly the same that exists in heaven. That's what she's been told. Now, right. is that what you were told? When Absolutely. You were a Muslim? Absolutely. It's the exact same Quran. That's why the Bible has always been under attack because Muslims will always make the claims that, hey, you guys have different Bibles, but we have only one Quran. You can't make this claim. We can. I've heard that for 38 years. I've always heard that. Yeah. This is the only book that can be traced back to its origin. You can't make that claim. This is the only book that has never changed. You can't make that claim. This is the only book that is eternal. You can't make that claim. This is the only book that has retained its eternality. Has has not been touched by human hands, you can't make that claim. And I've, I've said, yes, of course, I would never make that claim about the Bible. We don't need to make that claim about the Bible. We have never for a very good reason because we know it was written by men. We even know the names of the men that wrote each book. We put their names at the head of each book. Inspired by God, absolutely. But inspired by God, yeah. but not written by God, verbatim. And they're making an even bigger claim, and we're going to get into this later on. I don't want to really right. steal the uh, thunder for right now. But can you understand what Hutton was saying to me back in 2014? She was saying, Jay, wake up, wake up, wake up. Let me, really believe me, this will destroy every Muslim's faith. Because every Muslim has, own, every Muslim, and she's talking about 99.9% .9 of Muslims. And that is the Muslims who are here in the traditional world, the Muslims that are in, where she came from, in Turkey, the Muslims that are on the street, the Muslims that are in their homes who have always been drilled this in their head, that there is only one Quran, that God preserves that Quran, that God does not allow any human interference, that God guards it. And therefore, the Quran that we have in our hand today is the same as the Quran that is in heaven, the same that was given to Muhammad, the same that was written by Uthman. Therefore, to, under, to even suggest that there's another Quran or a second Quran or a different Quran destroys everything that she grew up with. And she says, Jay, that's the impact. We've got to collect these Quran. So she did so. She started collecting them. Now, she didn't go to these countries herself. She had friends who were in the certain country, like you say, Morocco, or they were there in Jordan, or they were there in uh, Yemen. Those are the three major countries. And she says, when you go there, go to the bookshop and ask them, I need this one. I need Kalun. I need Nafi. I need Ibn, Kalun, uh, Ibn Kathir. And she knew all the names because they're right there on Wikipedia. You can go up on Wikipedia, go, and I encourage any of you who exactly. are listening to this, you Muslims, go to Wikipedia and look at the 30 names, the 30 different canonical uh, Gerats, the 30 different yep. Gerat Qurans. And, and, and Samuel Green also on uh, uh, the uh, Answer in Islam uh, website did uh, invest on listing these total of 30, if you wish, the 10 plus the 2 for each one of them, the, uh, two narrators, and you even have links to where you can go and buy these different ones. I mean, it's it's like right, right there out in the open. It's not like there are secrets out there that you cannot really find them. It's I'm available. Show you what we have sitting right in front and of us. And I was going to ask you to explain to people, uh, you know, maybe now or next time, what is it that we're showing here? Why do we have these many different so-called Qurans? Why are they sitting right in front of us? Well, folks, these are seven that I just bought about two weeks ago. I got these online. You can buy these online. These are seven different Qira'at Qurans. That's what we're going to get into. We're going to go look at the, not just these seven. These are seven of the 30. Four of them are from the seven, and three of them are from the other what, 21 that we're going to talk about. Right. Or in this case, we're, we're, gonna, we're, we're going to get into that because we're going to talk about the seven, then the 10, then the the 30. But these ones you can buy. I got these from Illinois. These are here in the United States. And I would encourage any of you who want to get into this field, buy them up now because they're going to stop this once they realize how public we're going to make this, that the every one of these Qurans that you see here is different. Not one of these is the same. And this has nothing to do with translations. This has nothing to do with English or French or Portuguese or any other language, these are all in Arabic, which is your language. Yeah, and, and I want to just uh, explain to because people ask me sometimes, are you saying these are two different Qurans, different meaning, like when you open them, you're not going to find exactly the same thing. Um, I know where you're coming from when you say different. 
Now, please explain what do we mean okay. by different. So, when you look at the Arabic, not now this is Arabic and English. This is the Quran that we use today. This is the Quran that everybody uses. Well, now according to Yasser Qadi, at least 90% of the Muslim world uses this one. And this is the one that we have to use, and it's called the Hafs Quran. We'll get into that later on, what we mean by Hafs. This is the Quran here. I'm going to put it, put it right side up. Here we go. When you look at yeah. this one here, let's get it the right way. This right here, look and see what it says. It Mi says wash right there. Right. Wash. Min Nafi. That's okay. right. Uh, there, it's from this family of Nafi. Now, this one here and this one are two of the most popular Qurans in the world today. This one is used in North Africa. This one is used all around the rest of the world, and this is the one we have to use. But just looking at the Arabic text in these two, there are 5,000 differences between this book and this book. Yet I've always heard from every Muslim in every corner, in every debate, in every discussion, that the Quran is exactly the same. And There's not exactly one letter, what not one word say. different. That's exactly what I want you to say. When we say different, we're talking from a Muslim standpoint, folks. Muslims will tell you it's one Quran that has no changes whatsoever, yet, there you go, you've heard it, 5,000 changes just between these two. We're going to unpack that a little bit more in another episode. We're going to look at see some of the changes. We can't, don't have the ta time to go through all 5,000. And we're not the ones who are doing the work. You and I haven't done the work here. This has been done by a group who, they're in Australia, working under Bernie Power, Dr. Bernie Power, and his whole team of Arabists. They are all Arab speakers. They are all Arab teachers. They are all grammaticists. They have looked at these five, and they have broken them down into categories. And we're going to look at some of those categories, just to show you that with this, these are not incidental changes. These right. change not only wholesale words, but also the meanings, and in some cases, the practices, and also some cases, the yeah. beliefs. Well.